Shalom family. This is Sade coming to you with another slideshow. And the topic is the Hebrew movement out of Africa into the world. So let's start with the first. I hope you all having a blessed evening. And there's so much going on right now, y'all. We just need to stay prayed up and encourage each other as we uh, we continue through this journey um, until the Most High come and restore everything. The kingdom, the people, our language. So let's stay encouraged. But again, today is another slide, and the title is The Hebrew Movement Out of Africa Into the World. Okay, it says the name, <clears throat> the name listed in Genesis 10 represents ethnicities, cities, states, kingdoms, and regional population. They may be generally classified as nilotic, nilotic, or nilotic, Arabian, Mesopotamian, Eurasian, Levant. The table lists 70 population. So we're looking at the map, the ancient map of um, Mesopotamia. And we know also that if you do your research that Abraham's family, which Abraham was Cushite or Hamite and Shemitic. Uh, we know that his father was Semitic, Tira. So his mom had to be um, Hamitic. We know that Joseph married a Hamitic, had a Hamitic wife, we know um, Solomon has several <laughs> hundreds <laughs> of wives. Uh, we know Moses also married a Hermetic. We know Esau, Jacob's brother, also married a Hermetic. So we know we know that that um, originated with them throughout um, the ancient time. They mixed in with not just Hermetic um, nations, but other nations too. And of course they would if they're dispersed among the nations. And we know they would be mixing with other nations, too. So I'm learning that um, we cannot look at skin color to determine who's a Hebrew and who, who's not. And it's a bloodline. Uh, we know it comes from um, Abraham, which is a man of color. Noah as well. They say Noah was an albino. Uh, we know the albinos is um, prevalent in Africa, which he was still a Negro, what they call Negro black today, which is not an ethnicity at all. So I'm trying to stop calling myself black and Negro and Afro-America with neither of those because you can't find a country with black or Negro or colored or Afro-American, two continents. So anyway, I digress. Let's uh, go on with the slide. We have Mesopotamia here. We, this is a Levant area, we know that. Um, Canaan, which is Palestine here. Um, what else? We see all these different areas here. We know that, again, that Abraham family migrated from Africa uh, up through Mesopotamia, all through India, and also China and Japan as well. And they were called their new people, which, you know, they originated through from Kush, um, um, Africa, up through Mesopotamia, which is still Northeast Africa. So next slide. It says Hebrew, a.k.a. Ivory. Now we know that the ancient name for Hebrew is not Hebrew. That's the English name. We know that that derives from um, it's a Hebrew name. And really, Ivory is still not the correct name. I, wanted, I was trying to incorporate it with the little hyphens and stuff, but I could not figure that out. But anyways, give you an idea that it's it's not a um, English name; it's a Hebrew name. We know we find um, Eve or E or Eve or Hebrew. We find that um, all through the Bible. We find it in Genesis thirty nine thirteen to eighteen. We find it um, Hebrew or Eve. We find it in Genesis forty, um, chapter verse fifteen. Um. In, in fact, Genesis 40, 15 says, she opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him, which is talking about the, um, ain't the um, Egyptian woman. This is one of the Hebrew babies or Eved babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrews or Eved or Every 
women to nurse the baby for for you. Also found in Exodus um, second chapter, verse six through seven. And also found in Exodus 2, 11, just all through the Bible. Hebrew, which is the term Eve, or it's not a uh, English name. Hebrew is an English name, but not the actual ancient name for the, for the people of the Eve land or the, or the Hebrew land. So anyways, as it says that Genesis 10, 21 to 23, the eponymous, eponymous, <coughs> eponymous father of the Hebrew or Eve people. His descendant alone are the Hebrew Hebrew people. They were concentrated in Assyria, Arabia. <clears throat> so the Assyrian and the Arabia was connected to Nimrod, Abraham, and Moses. The English word Hebrew is derived from the ancient Akkadians, which were African Kushites from the lineage of Ham. Oh, I made that mistake. P, if that should be O-L. Sorry, y'all. I thought I'd proofread that correctly. They are derived from the oldest known Semitic language. I apologize for that mistake there. Okay, says the map with Mesopotamia and Indus River Valley. History of the Hebrew, aka Eve, cast. Cast just mean um, priests, uh, dispersion out of Africa, and the service of kingdom builders and high kings can be verified. According to Alice C. Lindsay, a Bible anthropologist, it says to the map to the right and left, actually, they were living in Arabia, here. They were living in Canaan, which is Palestine, here. Um, they were living in Southern e Europe, up in this area somewhere. And we know, again, we were scattered all over the world. We were scattered or migrated, plus we also through captivity. And the Indus River Valley before the time of Abraham. This is the Indus Valley right here. It's an ancient civilization map here. This is the Indus Valley. And again, Abraham family came from Cushites. Okay. From Africa through the Mesopotamia, this is where he was found. His family started his family here. Abraham. The next slide. Abraham's Kushite ancestors. It said linguistic and DNA studies have shown that Abraham and his ancestors were Kushites, whose cultural context was that of the Afro-Asiatic Dominion, which extended from West Africa to India. The region in red shows over here, the region in red. <coughs> shows to the left at the bottom, shows the area of Kushite rule. It says the Kushites included many people and they range in appearance from brown to red to black. Okay, Abraham, Kushite ancestor. And this is the Kushite rule. Okay, next slide. It says it continued with Genesis 10 movement out of Africa, Adam and Eve and Cain went east and now the dispersion of Nor descended into the area outside of the other parts of Africa. This is proof that aligned with genetic studies of the people coming out of Africa through Northeast Africa, AKA Middle East, making way for an agricultural revolution or agriculture people. Excuse me, second map. So here's a map. Just and I find this map in most of the Bibles. It has the Canaanites here, and this is the uh, tribes of the Canaanite. Over here we have Shem, and up here we have Japhet. And we migrated all over these places, and we build kingdoms. You all, kingdom for days. <laughs> Okay, next slide. Staging areas for the Nilotic Agriculture Revolution, AKA Hebrew, Hebrew or Eve. It says the region where the earliest known kingdoms were established. This is especially evidence in the case of the Kushite kingdom builder Nimrod found in Genesis 10, 
verses 8 through 12. Nimrod, a son of Cush, is the connection between the proto saharan ruler Noah and Abraham. We first meet Abraham in Mesopotamia because he is a descendant of Nimrod, of which is again his family migrated to that area. That's how he was, he ended up in Mesopotamia because of his family migrating out of Cush. I would guess that would be like up in Lord Egypt in that area, I would assume. But here's some king, kingdom building from by the Kushites here. We know that this is Egypt. Um, I don't know if it's Egypt, but this, this is another civilization I found online. Just a uh, picture. Next. It says, Abraham's ancestry came out of Africa. It says, the term Afro-Asiatic is generally classification of people who speak Afro-Asiatic languages. The majority of these languages are spoken in Africa. There are three main groups, Sahara, African, Afro-Arabians, and A um, Armenian and Afro-Asiatic. <laughs> the last two can be traced back to the region of Africa known as ancient Kush or Egypt. There is much evidence for the Kushite migration out of Africa, including DNA studies. The Kushites was great kingdom builders who controlled the major water system at a time when this part of the world was much wetter. And I believe what they thought was Kushites building, we know who built the, the pyramids in Egypt. And most of the kingdoms was by Hebrews that were called Kushites or Aviat people. If you look to the right where it says Afro-Asiatic, and then it has the Ch Chadic, the Egypt, Egypto-Semitic, Kushite, Berber, Chadic, Egyptian-Semitic, North Kushite, Narrow uh, Kushite, and so forth and so on. Um, so Abraham answers came out of Africa, and there was different um, languages from different tribes that spoke Semitic and Shemitic. That's why we mix you all, and we have to understand that Ham, Shem, and Japheth was brothers. They were they were brothers. So we're married cousins, distant cousins. You know, just to stay within the lineage, the line, the bloodline. Sorry. Next, it says captive Nubians. Detail from a Chapulon Chapulonian drawing. It says the new connection. Abraham's father was Tira, a name associated with Anu who originated in the Upper Nile Valley. Tira or Tara means priest in the Anu language. Genesis 10 described the Anu dispersion out of Africa into Mesopotamia. Again, that's where his, his relatives came from, out of Africa into Mesopotamia. That's how Abraham ended up in Mesopotamia with the name April and then Ham. <laughs> The Anu went as far as as far as east as Japan and north to Finland. I'm telling y'all, we're all over the place. So we just can say we're just in Africa or even just in the United States. We are all over the freaking world. This is Anu went as far as Japan and north to Finland. From Finland, they crossed through Greenland and Labr Labrador, Labrador to the eastern seaboard of Can Canada. Uh, um, and it says, my new friend, C. Kel, this is, in fact, this, this is a, um, a um, again, a part from, uh, writing from um, the article that um, Alice C. Lindsay, as I, I had mentioned in earlier, one of my earlier posts, um, um, early, earlier slide, her, her name, um, she writes a lot of articles, and I took this part out of her article. It says, she goes on to say that, um, my, my new friend, CK, tells me that the new of Eastern Canada have a red skin tone and are bearded. Some have green eyes. Uh, the red skin hue may appear as rosy cheeks or a reddish tone to, to tan skin. And I'm just going to the left because those are Nubians. <clears throat> Would you guess you gave a uh, description of the red skin and how they come in different colors? Um, it says Abraham means burnt father and refer to his reddish skin color. So. If you see a nilotic people, I should have put it on here. They can have, some of them have really dark skin, but you can see that red undertone. And that's with most of those people of color. 
have a red undertone. No, I have a red undertone. My brother's dark because I don't know what, but he has a red cheeky undertone. And so Abraham means burnt father, burnt father, and refer to the reddish skin color in the Arabic. The word ham means burnt. The Nilotic people were referred to burnt because they had a reddish brown skin tone. This includes Nubians, as is evidenced from the drawing of the gene Franco Chapelin, which is to the left, that's his drawing, who lead the Franco two skin expedition of 1828. One drawing depict a scene from the greatest temple at, at as in which some Nubian captives of Ramsey too are black and other red colors, or other red. So there you go, the new connection. And this is her um, article, the new connection. So I take, I'll take some of the writing from different um, writers, anthropologists, um, just some books that I've, I've, I've um, been reading. I've been just taking some of the information from their writings and research and putting them on a slide. Okay, describe their new dispersion. Does Genesis 10 describe their new dispersion? Alice C. Lindsay, just remember I mentioned earlier. It says, here's an interesting paper on the origin of the Ijo of Nigeria and other people who may have a connection to Noah's, let me stop moving that, to Noah's um, ancestor. It mentioned the seafaring Oru, also called the Anu, Hanu, or Anu, who were the in who were the and important people of the Nile Valley civilization and the complexes at Lake Shad and Nock and Nook, Lake Shad and Nock. Lake Shad was Noah's homeland. And Nock is probably the biblical nod to which Cain wandered. The word nod and nook are virtually identical in the Hebrew script. Genesis 10 tells us that Noah and his people spread out from Borno, or land of Noah, to populate the earth. Though all the people of the earth did not come from Noah's three sons, many modern people can be traced back to Noah's ancestors, the Nilotic Anu, through molecular geology, genealogy. It says the Anu were an aboriginal people of the upper Nile. They were first, there was the first rulers of the lower Nile, uh, one of their sanctuaries was called Anu, the original name for Heliopolis Hila, Hila, or Biblical On, to which the Great Pyramid was aligned. Now, I just some pictures to show you that, you know, we come in all different, um, you know, like the hair texture and some of the features. So we just can't go by just looking at someone. It, it's a bloodline thing. It says the Anu people were the descendants of Abraham. They were civilization builders. So I was in another book called When the World Was Black. This is what he wrote in one of his um, chapters. It says, in talking about the different um, writers and stuff, Rawlington called them Hamites, Tom of the Cushites. Sergi called them the Mediterranean race. Hayden called them the Eurasian, the Eura, 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 Eura Africans. <laughs> Wells called them the Iberian race. Huxley called them the Mela Okri. Mela Okra. Bolden called them Kushites, yet wouldn't admit they came from Africa. All the scholars agree that these were the people who built all the civilization of, the, of Europe the Near East and North Africa. Near, Near East is still um, Northeast Africa. I don't know why they keep using it because Near East or Middle East is a relatively new term. It's not an ancient term. So there was no such thing as that name back then. So we know that that was created when they created Suez Canal in 1869 or finalized it. Um, some trace their presence as far as India China and Indonesia. So again, we migrated and, and spread all over the place. And of course, the, then the Bible says in Romans, and also I think it was in um, Hosea, that Israel is a sand of the sea that cannot be numbered. Come on, y'all. We're not a small people. Just been scattered all over the place. Next. It says the Afro-Asiatic language, Hermetic, 
um, and submit. I think I've spelled that wrong again. I'm so sorry. The Afro-Asiatic languages family includes the languages of Ethiopia, the Berber languages of North Africa, the, the Hausa language of Northern Nigeria, other languages as far as Northern Tanzania, as well as A Arabic, Hebrew, and ancient Egyptian. As you can see, as you can see, most of the Afro-Asiatic languages are found in Africa, and it's from the African that we get all languages. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is a fact. Next slide. Abraham Kusha ancestors says, did the Bantu expansion, this is just my question, did the Bantu expansion, after doing a lot of all this research and reading and studying, I'm still learning, I, I just asked my question, did the Bantu expansion have any connection to Abraham migration from Africa to Mesopotamia? It says the Bantu expansion is believed to have taken place in at least two ways between approximately 4000 BC to AD 1. Linguistic analysis suggests that the expansion proceed in two directions. One went across or along the northern border of the Congo for forest region towards East Africa, and the other went south along Africa Atlantic coast into what is new now the Republic of Congo, Gabon, Cameroon, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Angola. So that's just a question I have. Maybe you, somebody want to go and research and do a video on it. Um, but I think there's a connection. Also, it says the Bantu Hebrew connection, uh, he, Bantu Hebrew migration. At least three migrations out of Africa have taken place in the past 120,000 years. The first that has been documented took place in the late Pelostocent, Pelostocent. Uh, 120,000 to 12,000 BC. Here, the movement was from the Upper Nile Valley and the Horn into coastal areas of Arabia. Evidence indicate that Nilotic people moved out of Africa in several directions. Thomas Stressors and his team have found hundreds of stones, age twos of African origin, on the island of Crete. Others have been found on the Iranian plateau, helping experts to trace the steps of a Nilotic tribe that passed through the region on their way to India, where it is settled in the, at the Andaman Island. The tribe has all the physical features of Black East Africans. Their ancestors were believed to have migrated out of East Africa about 60,000 years ago, according to Ham Ahamet Nasavadati, a member of the Archaeological Society at, at Iran's Cultural Heritage Center. The stone, age, or the stone Age artifacts found in Iran are very similar to those found in East Africa. I think that is it, so, you all. <clears throat> I just wanted to share some slides again today, a little short history, a combination of the Bantu people, and also Abraham's family migrating from Africa into Mesopotamia, and that's where he established his family, <clears throat> and so forth. So I think that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the little um, show, the slideshow. Uh, I'm, again, I'm really new at doing this. And I'm enjoying it. So hopefully I get better at it. <laughs> but again, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, just do a little research yourself. And again, my channel is about uh, food for thought. Just putting stuff out there, you know, letting people start thinking about um, these different subjects, about the different characters in the Bible, and then... Um, also um, showing them in history that the people are still relevant today, even though even back in ancient time as well as today, because they have seed that have scattered throughout with the culture and language and all of that's good stuff. So anyway, you all say shalom, have a blessed evening. And again, I hope you enjoyed the slideshow.